Hi there. I turned on the air so that I could get some cool coolness. I think it's like 100 degrees already. Today is April 4th, 2021. And I just left my mom's house. The kids are over at my in-laws with their dad. They're hunting for eggs and they're going to have fried bologna for lunch or dinner or whatever. I am shaken. Shaken, I don't know, muddy. I don't know what the word is. I'm definitely going through some differences of what I'm experiencing right now. Um, I last saw my husband face to face and all that on April 1st. And so I'm basically three days sober. And every time I think I'm well enough to stay away from him, something draws me back in like a magnet and I'm not very certain why I was sobering up from him. Like I get foggy. I get like a completely different perspective or a completely different opinion and feeling and wants and desires. Like uh, my whole noodle experience is different when it's just so hard for me to see straight sometimes. And my therapist talks about it like an addiction and I can't express any further right now about it without really going into more of the same thing that I've already talked about. So let's just talk about what this new stuff is, this new muddy feeling is, which is I'm alone. I'm utterly, utterly, I'm alone, but I don't feel lonely. Not always. Sometimes I do, but not always. Like my mom, I could have stayed at her house for the next two hours. I really could have, but I would have been a bump on the log. I want to go to Home Depot. I want to do a couple things. I'm going to figure out my life right now and just do my thing. You know what I mean? And um, I don't know. I guess I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I'm kind of just floating. I'm floating by. Let me start from the beginning. Okay. On March 31st, Jim and I had a marriage counseling session. It was just the intake. So the woman who was facilitating the intake had given us a bunch of assessments about where we were at currently in our marriage. And if it seemed um, not so bad or unsalvageable or somewhere in between. And we scored pretty low on our salvageable measures in the intake forms. And so when she had an opportunity to talk to us that hour, she asked us certain questions to try to gauge what level of commitment we each have towards this marriage therapy process, which going into it, I felt muddy somewhat because the message I keep giving Jim is that I want to support him, but from a different environment. I want to support him emotionally and lovingly as a wife that's going to not cheat on him and blah, 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 blah but from a different environment. That's the message I kept giving him because I believed in that message with all my heart and especially the noodles that we're doing it did. And then you've got magenta, which I'm gonna call her magenta because that's the way I'm explaining it right now. That part of me who has been longing to rebel, longing to do her own thing, longing to do the things that she has not ever been able to do because father prevented us, because husband prevented us, because we prevented us, because I sabotaged my own growth by just following the leader and doing what everybody wanted me to do. So if Magenta Noodle is now free and in her own apartment and doing her own thing and just loving life, and then she's got these other noodles like Gold Noodle and Peach Noodle and Green Noodle and these noodles that want to stay with him, and this has been the conflict for years, I just, I just now can be able to explain it in a way that helps me depersonalize from these different experiences when I, when I need to sort it out. If I don't sort it out in a depersonalized way, I am just one big bucket of mixed emotions because I do want to see him through. I do want to be a loving, supportive wife that helps him get better and stop treating people in his life like me, like second, I don't know, like trash. I mean, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm saying that he's He's not a terrible man and I've always had compassion and love for him and I can see his awesomeness, but I don't want to be a part of it anymore. I don't want to be a part of his awesomeness or his circus. It's not worth it to me anymore. And, and I can say that from any 
level of noodle, period. However, the message I kept giving him was one of validation. I wanted validation from him. I wanted control. I wanted to, I wanted to control the narrative. I wanted to have some sort of say in what was being said about me or what was being thought about me of how I wanted to be treated. I wanted him to treat me better or treat me right. I want to treat, I want him to be kind to me. So of course I am spinning this story or this narrative that I'm still this wife that wants to support him. When I really, if I, if I really deep down truly dig to that mint noodle who just wants to speak her truth, I really don't want to go back to gym ever. Not one year from now, not two years from now, not five years from now. And that's the noodle that is so scared of speaking my truth that it doesn't matter what gold and green and magenta even wants. I don't ever want to go back to him. I don't. I wish it would have worked out the first time around. And I'm actually really glad that I get a second chance at life right now because the, the experiences that I was going through in that marriage, it made me feel so trapped. It made me feel so confused that I talked myself out of friends. I talked myself out of family. I talked myself out of improving my life, improving my myself. I talked myself out of, I self-sabotaged myself on so many levels because my, my validation, my addiction to his validation was so severe that in order to get my validation, like a supply, like a narcissist supply, I had to become, I had to become all about the validation, which in essence might make me a narcissist also. But I think if I'm not mistaken, codependents are attracted to narcissists because they do have an addiction to be needed, an addiction to be useful, an addiction to get that validation by getting, but to, an addiction to enabling. And so, and, and a narcissist has an addiction to validation as well, but their methods on how they go about it are prohibitive to other people. They're prohibiting other people from living their best life. Like, my argument against people who might call me a narcissist is did I stop you from living your life? Did I, did I prevent you from having freedoms for you to make your own choices? Did I did I say that your experiences are not yours? Did I say that you weren't allowed to practice self-care? Did I say that you had to be there for me no matter what? And if you don't, how dare you? How dare you? How, how, how cruel of a person are you that you're not there for me? I don't think I ruined anybody's sense of self. But my husband has ruined my sense of self. And I was a participant in that. I don't, want to, I don't ever want to take away from that message. I was a participant because of my own addiction to validation. If I didn't have such a deep-seated addiction to validation... I wouldn't so willingly and consensually give up my freedoms, give up my identity, give up my wants, give up my desires. It's just become a very topsy-turvy world that I've been in. Okay, so on March 31st, we have this meeting with this um, therapist who's trying to assess how salvageable our marriage is and she's really hopeful and she's really excited to see that we're both eager to save our marriage. And of course, I'm repeating the narrative that I believed, which was true for me at the time. However, I'm not listening to Mint at all. Uh, Mint has been thrown into the basement again for the sake of preservation of our... We're, we're, we're not feeling safe outside of the house. We feel that we need to keep up a level of falseness with Jim right now because we are fearful of him being more depressed and blaming us for his depression. We're fearful of him being more depressed or angry or whatever and him affecting the children. And we're fearful of him blaming us and putting us in the middle of his narrative. So that was really where I was like, oh, okay, I can, I can control this by telling him this, this, and this, and I can do this and this and this. And so I called him up that night after the therapy session and I had this great idea that maybe we should have family dinner together where I come over to his place and he makes dinner for the four of us every other Thursday. And the other, other, the other Thursdays we'll be working on our marriage counseling. And to me at the time, that sounded like a great idea. If I was a woman working towards saving our marriage, that would be something I would say. And I believed every word I said when I said it. And then the conversation came about with, um, um, Easter. And I wanted 
to take my kids to see my brother in Tucson so that his kids and my kids could do an Easter egg hunt together. And he wanted to know what his mom was doing. He, doesn't, he didn't know what his mom was doing. And I came up with this idea that maybe we could do both. After I'm done with my brothers, I would come and I, the four of us can spend time with your parents to show good faith that I'm being the wife, that I'm supporting him from afar, and once in a while we can come together and we can make this work. Well, I'm sorry, not enough time has passed for me to even consider anything like that. And two, that really messes with my kids and they are not sure what the heck is left or right and they don't want me seeing their dad. They don't want us going down that hole. They want a chance to do this new life without dad and mom being together. So I, I was tossing and turning with that for days. I couldn't make up my mind about whether or not to, it was my idea to spend time with his parents and he got his mom okay with it. And she invited us, she invited me over and with, with him and the kids. And he was expecting me to come cause it was my idea of course. But then as I got to thinking about it and I watched some videos about um, codependency and really it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's an addiction to controlling the outcome so that you get validated. And I'm like, ah, that's what I'm doing. I'm controlling the outcome of what his parents say to me. Um, how nice the parent, his parents are, how kind Jim is to me. I'm really only doing it because I'm, I'm addicted to the validation. That's all it is. I don't really want to be over there. I don't really want to hang out with them or eat their freaking fried bologna or anything. Right? So anyways, I went to Tucson. I just came back today and I went to my mom's house just before three o'clock when they were expecting the kids. And my mom dropped the kids off over at my in-laws for me because everybody knows how hard it is for me. I could, I could see myself getting to the parking lot, I mean the driveway, sitting there, dropping the kids off and going, okay, bye. And then Jim coming out and then me being sucked into the conversation with Jim. And it's like, I really need to stay away. I need to stay away from this toxicity of my marriage that has caused me to be so muddy. The pendulum swings, starts swinging again and I need to stop being so buddy. Anyways, I'm, um, I'm at Home Depot now. I'm going to do a couple of things for me and then I'm going to go home and yeah, I will talk to you later. Bye. Happy April 4th. The 4th of never.